Have you ever been caught off guard by a 15-minute meeting reminder from Outlook? Are you ready to take control of your day and boost your productivity? This Power Automate flow will check your Outlook calendar daily for any meetings that are scheduled before noon. It'll notify you in Teams at 6 a.m. or whatever time you prefer and send you a list of your first three meetings. Plus, any meetings that require advance work will be highlighted so you can avoid showing up unprepared and get your shit together if you haven't already. Take your flow one step further by sending yourself a custom adaptive card to let you know when you don't have any meetings before noon. Find out how to do this at the end of the video. Links to the JSON for the adaptive card and timestamps are listed in the description box below. Feel free to skip ahead. If you'd like to level up and tackle your day like a boss, keep watching. In Power Automate, I'm going to create a new flow. Because I want this flow to run every weekday morning, I'm going to select Scheduled Cloud Flow. Give your flow a name so you can find it later. I want this flow to run every weekday. I'll deselect Saturday and Sunday, and I'll press Create. Click the Recurrence action. Click Edit. Click on Show Advanced Options. Select your time zone and select the time you'd like your flow to run. Next, we'll add a Convert Time Zone action. This will allow us to convert the current time to our local time zone. For the base time, insert the UTC Now expression. This will give us the current time. For the source time zone, search for Coordinated Universal Time. For the destination time zone, select your local time zone. And for the format string, search for Round Trip. Next, add a Compose action to store the value for 12 a.m. today. I'll use the Format Date Time expression to grab the date only, and I'll insert the converted time here. We'll need the date in this format. I'll append this text to the end for 12 a.m. The time needs to be in this format for the flow to work. I'll copy this action to my clipboard and add the copied action here. Change this value to suit your needs. Since event times are retrieved in UTC time, I need to add seven hours based on my local time zone, the number that I would like to store here. I only want to retrieve events today that start before noon. Instead of putting 12 here, I'm going to put 19. Next, we'll add the get events action. Select your calendar. Since we only want to get calendar events for today that start before noon, we need to add a filter query. Click on Show Advanced Options. Input Start Date Time GT for greater than. Insert single quotes and insert the 12 a.m. Compose Action output here. Input and Start Date Time LT for less than. Insert single quotes and insert the noon Compose Action output here. You can also customize your filter query to omit any standing meetings if you'd like by filtering on the event subject line. I want to order the events by the start time in ascending order. I'll input start date time ASC. Insert the number of events you'd like your flow to return here. Next, we'll initialize six variables. One for the event title, event start date time, event body, event location, event title style. For the event title style, we'll set the default to accent. This will add a light blue background to the title of each event. And lastly, event list. These will be used to store and set values for the adaptive card. Next, we'll add a condition action. We want to check and see if the get events action returns any events. We'll use the length expression. Insert the value from the get events action here. If the length is equal to zero, we'll do nothing. If it's not equal to zero, we'll loop through the events. For that, we'll need an apply to each action. Insert the value from the get events action. We're going to set the event title, body, start date time, and location variables here. Search for the subject and insert it here. Search for the start time and insert it here. Search for the location and insert it here. Search for the body and insert it here. You want the body with the capital B. Next, add a convert time zone action. We'll use this to convert the start time of the event to the local time zone. Insert the event start time variable here. For the source time zone, search for coordinated universal time. For the destination time zone, select your local time zone. And for the format string, search for round trip. Next, add an HTML to text action. This action will convert the event body content from HTML to plain text. Insert the event body variable here. Add a compose action. We'll use this action to get the time of each event in a specific format. We'll need a format date time expression. Insert the converted time here. I'll use this format for the time. Now, we'll need to add two parallel conditions to our flow. These will run at the same time to optimize our flow. We'll use the first condition to check and see if the event location variable is empty. Insert the event location variable here. If the variable is empty, we'll set a value for it. If not, we'll do nothing. Add a parallel branch and insert another condition. For this condition, we'll check to see if the event body variable is empty. Insert the event body variable here. If it's empty, we'll set a value for it. 
If the value is not empty, we're going to add a few more conditions here. First, insert a compose action. Any Outlook events that are Teams meetings will include Teams meeting info at the bottom of the event body. We don't want to include that in our adaptive card. We'll use this compose action to split out the Teams meeting info from the event body variable. In Outlook, I have a Teams meeting event open. I'm going to copy this chunk to my clipboard and use it as my delimiter. Insert a split expression and insert the output from the HTML to text action here. Add a comma, single quotes, and we'll paste the content from the Outlook event here. I'm going to wrap the split expression with the first expression. We're going to set the event body variable with the compose output. The next compose action is optional. I'm going to use it to return the length of the event body variable. This will help with any troubleshooting. Insert the length expression and insert the event body variable here. Next, add a condition action. We'll use this condition action to check if the event body variable is empty. If it is, we'll set a value here. If the event body variable is not empty, we want to check for specific text that may indicate if any advanced work is required. Insert condition action for that. I'm going to wrap the event body variable in a to lower expression. This will convert all the text in the event body to lowercase. This way, I can avoid any case sensitivity issues. I'm going to change this to contains and I'm going to enter the text I would like it to search for. Customize this step to suit your needs. If you're adding multiple conditions, make sure to change this from and to or. I'm only going to use one condition in my flow. If advanced work is required, we'll use a set variable action to set the event title style variable to warning. If not, we'll set it to accent. The next three compose actions will be used to hold the JSON we need for the adaptive card. All JSON used in this tutorial can be found in the description box below. Alternatively, you can head over to the Adaptive Card Designer and create your own adaptive card. You'll want to ensure that you are inserting the Compose actions here and not here. The first Compose action will be used for the event title. Insert the event title variable here. Next, we'll need to define the style. Insert the event title style here. This Compose action will be used for the event details. Insert the start time output here. Insert the event location variable here and we'll insert the event body variable here. The last compose action will be used to combine the event title and event details. We'll need these to be combined for our next action. Insert the event title output, hit the return key, and insert the event details output. Add an append to string variable. We'll use the append to string variable for the event list. Insert the compose action output from above. Every time the apply to each action loops through an event, we want it to append the next event item to the event list variable. This way, we're not receiving three separate messages for our three events, but rather one message with all three events listed. Since we set the event body variable at the top of the apply to each action here, we want to make sure to clear it out at the end of each loop. Otherwise, the event body variable will return the details from the very first event each time it loops through, which isn't what we want. Add a set variable action. Insert the null expression. Because we set the event title variable here, we'll need to set it back to accent at the end of each loop. I'm going to collapse a few of these actions so it's a little bit easier to look at. We'll need two more compose actions. You'll want to ensure that you're inserting the compose actions as part of the condition. The first compose action will be for the event list. We need to remove the last comma in the event list variable. For this, we'll need a few expressions. First, we'll need the length expression. We'll insert the event body variable here. Next, wrap the length expression in a sub expression. Add a comma and a one. We'll wrap the sub expression in a sub string expression. Insert the event list variable here, a comma, a zero, another comma, and we'll close it off. The next compose action is optional. You can choose to insert your card title text right into the adaptive card JSON if you'd like. I prefer to use compose actions for my adaptive card title so it makes it easier to change later. For the last action, we'll add the post adaptive card in a chat or channel. We'll post this as a flowbot in a chat with the flowbot, enter your email, and we'll paste the adaptive card JSON here. Insert the card title output here, and the event list output goes here. Our flow is ready to be tested, and here's my adaptive card. You can see that the two meetings that require advanced work are highlighted in yellow. The one that doesn't have any advanced work required is here in blue. Boost your productivity by including a notification in your flow when you don't have any meetings before noon. My notification includes a short message along with a GIF. If there are no events returned from the Get Events action, instead of doing nothing, we'll have the flow display an adaptive card. We'll post as a flowbot and we'll post it in the chat with the flowbot. I'll paste my JSON here. I'll create a compose action for the card title, text, and image URL. I'll drag the post adaptive card action below these compose actions. 
If I want to edit this content in the future, I can make the changes here in the Compose Actions rather than replacing the content in the JSON. I'll insert the card title here, the card text here, and the image URL here, and I'll give that a test. What other automations are you looking to create? Let me know in the comments below. Give this video a like if you plan to create this automation or if you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching.